Hello and welcome back. I'm excited to be back making video tutorials, so expect a lot more to come in the near future on this channel. Today we will be talking all about Midjourney's new Style Tuner feature. So what is Style Tuner? The Style Tuner is a tool that allows you to guide and control the aesthetics of Midjourney. Each Midjourney release uses a default style aesthetic. That default aesthetic interacts with both the text and images that we use in our prompts. By using a style tuner, we create what is called a style code. We can then use that style code in our prompts to override the default mid-journey aesthetics. Personally, I consider the style tuner to be a bit of an advanced feature. It does take some time to wrap your head around how to best use it. I'm still learning what works best for me. Adding a style code to your prompts can be really helpful if you're trying to get consistent aesthetics. It's also really helpful if you don't know how to describe the aesthetic that you want, because in the style tuner, you pick the images that represent the style directions that you want to go. And then the style code that you get is an alphanumeric representation of those style directions that you can then put in your prompt. There are quite literally billions and billions of styles that you can now access through using the style tuner. If you thought Midjourney was a creative rabbit hole before, just wait until you start using style tuners. In this video, I will show you how to use the style tuner to create your own style code. Once we have the basics down, we'll go a bit deeper and talk about some of the nuances of the process and different ways that you can use those style codes. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I have some freebie style codes with examples that you can start using in your mid journey prompts today. All right, let's get started. We are going to create a style code for pastel neon impressionism. Now, why did I choose this instead of something like a man standing in a field of poppies? I wanted to start with an aesthetic that I felt could be usable across diverse subject matter with some noticeable consistency. Here's what pastel neon impressionism looks like with the default Midjourney style at a few different stylized values. To kickstart the style tuner, we'll use the command slash tune. Then we'll put in our text prompt and press enter. After pressing enter, you'll see a message like this with some information. Here we have our prompt. Then we have something called style directions, which is set to 32 by default. The number of style directions tells Midjourney how many AB image pairs to create for the style tuner. You can set this to 16, 32, 64, or 128 by clicking the menu at the bottom. Creating a new style tuner does cost fast hours, and the number of fast hours varies depending on how many style directions that you want. Lastly, we have mode, which is set to default. This just means that the default Midjourney style will be used to generate the images for the tuner. If you usually add dash dash style raw to the end of your Imagine prompts, you may consider changing this to raw mode. Now we'll click submit and confirm that yes, we are sure. And after a couple of minutes, the style tuner is ready. You'll see a message like this with a link to the Style Tuner webpage. This also gets sent to your DMs in Discord. So here we'll click the link. And now we're on the Style Tuner webpage. The Style Tuner webpage contains pairs of images that were generated with the text prompt Pastel Neon Impressionism. Each row shows a pair of images. By handpicking images on this webpage, you are in the driver's seat for your aesthetic preferences. What sets the style tuner apart from using the default Midjourney style is that here we are choosing specific style directions based on visuals, not just words. So if you've been struggling to convey a specific style through text prompts and Midjourney hasn't quite captured it, using a style tuner is a great way to get closer to your custom aesthetic. There are two ways that you can select images. The first way is to select from this rows view, which is what we are looking at now. Here we have 32 rows of images because we selected 32 style directions when we submitted our tuner prompt. You can select one image per row or skip as many rows as you like. When you select an image in a row, you are defining a style direction. So when I click this image, I'm telling Midjourney that my preferred aesthetic is in the style direction of this image and away from the style direction of this image. The second way that we can select images is in the grid view. You can use either view and flip back and forth between them. I like to start with the grid view and then after I make my selections, I go back to the row view so that I can see the full grids for each image I selected. So I'm gonna pick a few more images here. 
Okay, I finished selecting the images that I want to represent the style directions for pastel neon impressionism. At the bottom of the page is an imagine prompt that contains our original tuner prompt text and the new style code. The style code is an alphanumeric representation of the style directions that we chose through our image selections. One of the great things about the style tuner web pages and the style codes is that they are shareable with other Midjourney users. You can also come back to this style tuner web page at any time and make new selections and get a new style code without using fast hours. So let's see how this style code performs. I'm going to submit a few jobs with the original tuner prompt text, our new style code, and a few different stylized values. Okay, here are the results. I think that's a pretty nice aesthetic for pastel neon impressionism. But what happens when I try to use this style code with a different text prompt? And this is where we start talking about style code portability. Basically, how well do the aesthetics in that style code transfer to other prompts? Style codes can affect everything from composition, subject matter, colors, medium, and so much more. If we perceive a style code as being too unpredictable, we would say that that style code is not very portable. For example, I made a style code using a tuner prompt of mysterious forest creature, cinematic, photographic. Then I prompted for extreme adventure cat and got these. Now, none of these are what I expected, but I'm not really complaining. But you can see how just adding that style code on gave me something completely different from what I prompted for. To see how portable a style code is, you want to submit diverse prompts with your style code. And just a warning, if you have interest-based hyper-focus tendencies like I do, it's likely that you will spend hours doing this if you stumble into a really interesting style code. So to demonstrate the effect of our pastel neon impressionism style code, I'm going to submit three sets of prompts and then we'll compare the results. Set one will be text prompts without the style code. Set two will be text prompts with the style code. And set three will be text prompts that include the original tuner text and the style code. Okay, I ran those and here are all of the images that were generated for set one. Here are the images for set two. So now you can start to see the effect that that style code has on those text prompts. And here's the images for set three. So when I included the original tuner prompt text, the images are even closer to the intended style. In some cases, the tuner prompt text is needed as an unlock phrase and including it in your prompt can help push some style codes to full strength. So to me, this style code seems fairly portable, at least with these examples. You can also combine style codes to create some really unique styles. To do this, just separate your style codes with a dash. I combined our pastel neon impressionism style code with a style code that I created for sci-fi nostalgia film. And here are some of the images that I got. I think now is a good time to mention that I've compiled some of my style codes into a free downloadable PDF. It comes with image examples and links to the original style tuner web pages. You can find the download link in the description below. I do plan on updating this document as I create and explore more styles. Feel free to re-download the latest version anytime at no cost. Okay, we've covered a lot so far and hopefully you've learned something about how to use the style tuner, but you may still have some questions. So let's try and tackle a few of those. Number one, you may be asking yourself, how in the world am I supposed to remember those long alphanumeric style codes? Well, you don't have to. You can use the command slash prefer option set to create an alias for your style code. To do this, type prefer option set and then a space. Enter the alias that you want to give your style code. I'm going to name this pastel underscore neon. Then press the tab key and click value. Type dash dash style and paste in your style code. Then press enter. Now you have an alias for your style code. To see all aliases, just type slash prefer option list. And then to use your style code alias in a prompt, simply include dash dash and the alias name in the prompt. Midjourney will automatically convert that to the style code when you submit your prompt. Number two, can images be included in tune prompts? Yes, but tuner prompts must include text. You can do image plus text or text only. Number three, can style codes be made without using fast hours? Yes. There are two methods to do this. Method number one, you can use a pre-existing style tuner web page and select your own preferred set of images and then get your style code. 
Method number two is to use dash dash style random. Simply type in your imagine prompt and add dash dash style random to the end. And Midjourney will generate a random style code. Now you won't get a style tuner web page with this approach, so what you see is what you get. Lastly, number four, is there a way to see if someone has already created a style tuner for a specific prompt? Yes. When you type a slash tune prompt, if someone else has already created a style tuner using that text, the same style directions and the same mode, Midjourney will show you a link to the existing style tuner webpage. You can either use that existing web page without using up your fast hours, or you can run it anyway and get a new set of images to work with. That wraps up today's video. I hope I've demystified some of the information around the new style tuner. I would love for you to download my style code PDF and try some of them out. Again, the link is in the description below. Please comment down below if you enjoyed this video or have any questions about Midjourney's new style tuner. And of course, like, subscribe, all the things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.